Sorry, Israel is a bastard state. And what I mean by that, it doesn't have a father. In fact, it's the product of one night stand of the UN and the British Empire. It's the 25th day of Ramadan, 1442 Hijri. Muslims being attacked while praying in Ramadan in Masjid Al-Aqsa by the Zionist terrorists. For 70 years, the Western world has ignored Palestine. They have blood in their hands ever since the first Jewish migrants arrived in Palestine. For 1,400 years, Jews have lived in the land of Islam. They lived under the protection and hospitality of Islam. The Jews knew it. There wasn't any animosities between them until the, the, the Jewish people came into this country said this is our country and they didn't say it's our country but we recognize that there's another people living here let's see what we can work out no the whole idea of Israel until today is this is our country from the Mediterranean to the Jordan River and it's only our country. It's exclusively our country. There is no other people. Now, why did that happen? 40,000 people went into Palestine. Okay, now imagine this mass population of a country uh, which can't actually cope with that, which, which, start, which sparked something called in 1936, the Arab Revolt. But let's not forget that you had terrorist activity by the Irgun and by the Haganah and by Levi and that terrorist activity was rewarded by the British Empire which in 1946 culminated of course in the King David hotel bombing which was the targeting of civilians 1948 after the after the resolution in 1947 by the UN 1948 May the 13th I think it was Jew, uh, Israel became what it is today Palestine under the Ottoman Empire was a peaceful place to live until a non-religious Jew called Theodor Herzl dreamt up something crazy a Jewish land he suffered from inferiority complex and sought to fix this by grabbing somebody else's land and this was his vision the notion of Jews rebuilding their national homeland before the arrival of the Messiah was sheer blasphemy The Jews are not supposed to be in Jerusalem before the arrival of the Messiah. It is a blasphemy and they all knew it. In the book called A Brief Guide to Judaism, it stated there, the notion of Jews rebuilding the national homeland before the arrival of the Messiah was sheer blasphemy. The religious Jews do not support Zionism. Thus, this is a story about the sins of the Zionists. The Zionist terrorists formed several terrorist organizations such as Haganah and Irgun. It's hard to believe that just a few weeks ago, 
they were terrorized by the Nazis in Europe. I joined uh, the Bricha. Bricha means escape, which was a division of the Haganah, of the Jewish underground movement. And in fact, my job was to smuggle people from the uh, German border into Belgium or into France directly, or from Belgium into France. Upon arriving in Palestine, without feeling gratitude for the lives being spared, they engaged in the act of terrorizing the Arabs, who has been hospitable to the Jewish race. These terrorists went on to become Prime Ministers of Terrorist Israel with the blessings of the United Kingdom and the United States. This happened despite the fact that they killed British soldiers in the land of Palestine. We did, of course, have an enormous amount of covered information about uh, the organization of Jewish terrorism and uh, the supply of arms, equipment and so on to the Jewish terrorists. It's hard to imagine people who were weak just a few weeks before became so powerful and so hating to the people of Arabs whom they just met. These are the kind of people who are giving troubles till these days. بلادنا سنة 17 وأنا كان عمري سبع سنين وحضرت تركيا وما كان في البلاد شيء إلا يهود وعرب مثل الإخوة وما في بيننا شيء اللي نعد حرابة لكن الإنجليز استعماري كان يجيب بالألوف من الهجرة من اليهود وحضرت Without feeling guilty or repentant they came and drove to take the land. They just grab whatever they can see and they chase away the original Arab people there. It's really unbelievable and mind-boggling how they can do that. This is very strange, as if they've got this in their genes. Perhaps that's why they were hated by the Western world before snobbish while thinking that God has chosen them. This covenant was broken the moment they spread bloodshed and broke the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not kill. They were the prophet killers, as we shall see. To this day, Jews have formed settlements rampantly and sporadically. This caused the Palestinian government to be non-functional. Lies after lies that has been spread to the world that the Jewish people are interested in a two-state solution. Israel's Prime Minister says he wants a two-state solution, but he's never actually said he wants to evacuate the settlement. The current terrorist Prime Minister is a racist, and he has approved an ethnic cleansing of thousands of Palestinians. The world has never seen a psychological holocaust being systematically carried out on the Palestinian Arabs. Zionists have been telling the world that the land of Palestine belongs to their forefathers. They use this argument to justify the land grabbing. The truth is, it was the Canaanites who were there well before the Israelites came to Palestine. Zionists brainwash our Christian friends to gain their support. But our Christian friends knew that this was a Zionist political agenda. The truth is, the land of Palestine has been inhabited by the Canaanites since the Bronze Age. The truth is, the great-great-great-grandchildren of the Canaanites have more right than the Zionists to own this land. Who are the descendants of Canaanites?
people, where do the Canaanites come from? I mean, they're indigenous from the hunter-gatherers that were there during the Pleistocene. So, after all that, the researchers found that the Lebanese are the owner of the land. Isn't that amazing? And look at them. They never come back and claim the land. They are the rightful owners of the land. Of course they can claim the land, but they never did. Which shows how peaceful and how civilized they are. Land grabbers are really uncivilized people. So the Zionists really can't use the argument that that's my father's land, that's my grandfather's land, because they're not, and it's been proven scientifically. So all these claims are really ridiculous. The only thing you guys really have to say about that, if, okay, you were there 70 AD, there was a siege of Jerusalem, very well known. Hebron the king and so on. Now we talk about ancient history. Here, the Normans were here. The, you know, we always talk about Hastings. Let's talk about the fact that the Romans were here. Okay, there was the Gal uh, Gallic, what's it called? The Gallic Wars or whatever, in, uh, uh, before Christ. So some Ital Italian guy comes and says, we're Roman, we have rights to Britain. This is the ridiculous nature of the claim. No one makes these, you have to understand guys. No one makes these claims except for Zionists. Understand that. So, using the same argument, the Lebanese Arabs have more rights to the land of Palestine. But perhaps land grabbing is a behavior of a typical English hypocritical government. The hypocritical English government annexed Wales, took Scotland, fought the Irish, grabbed the whole India, Malaya, Borneo, Australia, New Zealand. And have you seen the map of Africa? It's been carved out by this Western government. They're all land grabbers. The Western or European governments have the knack of stealing other people's countries. That's why the Western government are supporting terrorist Israel. And don't forget the United States. They've got 800 military bases in 150 countries and they've grabbed a lot of lands. The American regime have chased away indigenous people. You have to read this book, Unworthy Republic, to find out more. The Zionists have hijacked the word anti-Semitic to refer to the hatred of Jews. The truth is, Semitic language is ancestors to many languages such as Aramaic, Arabic, Tigrinya, Amharic, besides just Hebrew. Languages arise from people who speak the languages. Let us see how Arabic influences Hebrew's language. Philippe, always been extensive contact between Hebrew and Arabic in the Holy Land, and Arabic has left its mark on Hebrew. Today, I'm going to focus on the influence of the Arabic language on modern Hebrew. If you pay too much attention to politics and conflict, then you might think that Hebrew speakers and Arabic speakers completely isolate themselves from each other, and that there's no way that Hebrew speakers would let their language be influenced by Arabic. But this is definitely not the case. Arabic influence on Hebrew actually goes back much earlier than the modern Hebrew era. During the height of Islamic civilization in the Middle Ages, Jewish scholars translated many Arabic writings into Hebrew. But there were many new scientific and philosophical concepts that couldn't be expressed using Hebrew's existing vocabulary. New Hebrew words were created using related roots and word patterns from Arabic, like tarikh, meaning date, from Arabic tarikh, meaning history or date. The medical term atzav, meaning nerve, this comes from Arabic, Asab. Yezer ben Yehuda, often referred to as the father of modern Hebrew, looked to modern standard Arabic as a source of roots and vocabulary that could serve as a model for an expanded modern Hebrew vocabulary. Hmm, right. As we can see, 
the father of modern Hebrew, actually plagiarized and borrowed from Arabic language to revive their almost dead language. If most of the early Zionists had been Mizrahim, modern Hebrew today might have been pronounced more like Arabic. Modern Hebrew pronunciation is based on Sephardic pronunciation, which was more similar to Arabic pronunciation. But because most of the early Zionists who moved to Palestine in the 19th century and early 20th century were from Europe and spoke languages like Yiddish, Russian and German, they naturally found some of the characteristically Semitic consonants difficult to pronounce. As we can see, the Europe or Ashkenazi Jews were not Semitic people, hence they can't pronounce Semitic consonants. So, as we can now clearly see, Jewish people's language were revived only recently. It was a nearly dead language, with Arab advances in science and technology. Jews flourished as they translated all the scientific information. Truly, Jews should thank Islam and the Arabs for their well-being. This means Semitic languages are spoken by Semitic peoples. As we have seen, Semitic peoples were in the region where the Canaanites were. So any race that live in the Middle East are Semitic peoples. If you abuse any of them, you're really purely 100% anti-Semitic. On the other hand, Ashkenazi Jews were from Europe and they don't have Semitic blood in them. Why are they hijacking the word anti-Semitic? Simple, because they are the crybabies of Europe. They're trying to make the world stop criticizing them when they kill the Palestinians. They are the fathers of all deceit. The Zionists should be ashamed of themselves. Not many people know about this shocking story that I'm going to reveal. The Zionists actually have a cordial historical relations with the Nazis. Later, Zionists worked hand in hand with the Nazis to get rid of all the Jews from Europe. There's well-known research being done and a lot of factual manipulations to hide this information from general public. Let's have a look at this. Yes. Uh, well, what, well, what you should do is get uh, Francis Nicosa, who's the Professor of Holocaust Studies um, at the University of Vermont on your program. Uh, he's been researching the Holocaust and writing about it for over 40 years. His latest book talks about the overwhelming support in the Nazi government and the Nazi party for German Zionists because the German Nazis wanted a, a country free of Jews. The German Zionists wanted all those Jews to go and live and create a Jewish you, state in you, Palestine. So just, so okay, just to clarify, didn't just say to they clarify. liked each other. This is the book that Ken was talking about, Zionism and anti-Semitism in Nazi Germany by Francis Nicosia. Ken Livingston said absolutely nothing wrong. Everything he said was the truth, historical fact, proven. I've got the books, so should you. There was an agreement between the Nazi filth of Hitler and the Zionist leaders in Germany to send Germany's Jews to Palestine because both of them believed that the German Jews were not German and that they were aliens even if they'd been there for centuries they must leave so in that sense Nazism and Zionism were two sides of the same coin they even actually minted a coin to prove it to celebrate the Havara agreement But in 1933, 
they concluded what was effectively a treaty that the German Jews would be transported to Palestine. And that is the Zionist project. And that's a fact. It's a historical fact. Every scholar, including Israeli scholars and including Jewish scholars, will tell you that. Nazi ideology also coincided with the Zionist aims. Both parties wanted to see the Jews out of Germany and into a Jewish land, that is, Palestine. Um, his most uh, successful uh, interaction was undoubtedly with Kaiser Wilhelm II uh, of Germany, with whom he, uh, he accompanied on a trip to Israel. So he went first to Wilhelm II and he felt this is really going to work. If I can convince the Germans to back my Zionist plan, then in fact we'll be able to give Israel to the Jews and all will be well. So Zionists are Nazis. In fact, they're two sides of the same coin. Zionism is an illegal movement that caused much of the bloodshed in Palestine since the fall of Ottoman Empire in 1918. The Balfour Declaration, which consists of 67 words, had sealed the fate of Palestine. The Zionists have interfered with British politics to influence the outcome. They have lobbied and bribed the UK cabinet into deciding to grab Palestine. Whereas, of course, the Zionist lobby was right in among British politics, and there were Zionists so close to the cabinet that uh, there have been instances where cabinet ministers actually telephoned the result of a cabinet meeting straight to the Zionist concern. The Zionists were keen to get rid of the lower class Jews and dump them to the Middle East. During the drafting of this declaration, Mark Sykes, yes, the notorious plotter of sykes pico agreement, has colluded with the Jewish health minister, Herbert Samuel, to persuade the prime minister at the time, Lloyd George, to give Palestine to the Zionists. The Zionists met the British government in early 1917 to discuss this matter. The Zionists were represented by Wiseman, Rothschild, whereas the British government were represented by Arthur Balfour and Mark Sykes. In this declaration, there's no mention of Arab Palestine. Instead, it was replaced with non-Jewish people of Palestine. Every British member of parliament has got blood on their hands till today. Zionists have long been twisting the arm of United States presidents. They worked on the US and United Nations delegates to grab and partition Palestine. The Jews in America and Britain were cooperating with each other to push through the partition of Palestine. At the General Assembly in November, the Zionists and the Americans used strong arm tactics to win votes. We were working very hard under the direct personal instruction of President Truman to uh, get a successful vote on that. We uh, used uh, all the persuasion we could with delegates in New York. We went to many capitals bilaterally to try to get their governments to be sure that they had the instructions to work with us on this matter. Notice this man said, they had the instructions to work with us on this matter. They actually threatened and coerced the delegates into following the instructions to vote for the partition of Palestine. In the meantime, pressure was brought on the states, on the capitals, and uh, telephones from the Zionists and from Truman to the capitals, to heads of states. Commands came to the members to change their vote. And some of them, like Romulo, had to run away because he was threatened by the Zionists. Haiti, uh, Haiti's representative began to cry when he was forced to change his vote. Belt of Cuba resigned 
That is how strong the United Nations Security Council, headed by Truman, is. They are doing blatant illegal maneuvers to create an illegal terrorist nation. Slavia, abstain. The resolution of the Duck Committee for Palestine was adopted by 33 votes, 13 against, 10 abstentions. Why would the UN be so blatantly pro-Zionist? Indeed, the UN has been pro-Zionists since the days UN were created. Zionists have infiltrated all the political government offices, all the parliaments of the world and congresses. Clearly, United Nations have been abused to illegally advance the Zionist political agenda worldwide. Since then, all we have seen is heartbreaking news one after another. There are so many evidences, so many records to show that United Nations is a pro-terrorist Israel organization. Zionists have been throwing money around to influence all the governments in the world, including the Muslim nations. Zionists stifled, undermined, hidden, or attacked quietly and publicly. And all the Muslims can do is just protests in the streets. Until when must this go on? You only have to read the book called The Protocol of Learned Men of Zion, which until today they denied writing this book. Their agenda has been written and they are very well planned. Zionists control the banking systems, IMF, World Bank. They give loans to quieten the Muslim nations. They control the media. They develop sophisticated security and spying technologies and weaponries. They use Munafikin as their spies. They are now using Muslim nations to fight and disagree with other Muslim nations. They work together with Western government to sell weapons to kill Muslims. They will do this till the end of time. Why are Zionists so harsh? They are worse than animal. They have been brutal for more than 100 years to the Palestine. That's because they were descendants of apes. In fact, you can see this feature in some of the terrorist ministers. Why do you think our beloved Kitab mentioned about this twice? As stated in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 65 and Al-A'raf Ayah 166 That's why they can't join any other species. Where do you think the Ashkenazi Jews came from? And not only they don't repent, they also became prophet killers. There's a concept in Islam which says that Jews are killer of prophets. That the, the Bible lays out a lot of um, what they call prophets, but people in like Zechariah, Zechariah, uh -huh. uh, Isaiah, are uh, being killed by Jews. Yep. Uh, those, first of all, I don't know this because... Well, listen, uh, we're, I'm going to plead guilty because I, I can tell you that the biblical prophets are much tougher on the Jews than even the anti-Semites have been. So yes, uh, Jews have killed prophets. Jews have done many, many serious sins. We have suffered because of it. Part of why uh, with the exile is so long, part of why we don't have the temple is because of those sins. And the prophets, whether it's Ezekiel or Isaiah or Jeremiah, or the prophets of the smaller books, constantly remind us and remind us uh, that we sometimes have the sins of arrogance, smugness, of not listening to the teachings of God and the teachings of the prophets. No wonder they have been so inhumane. Zionists are animals which you can't justify or reason with them. So what do we do now? Is there hope? If we look at United Nations Security Council, they never send UN peacekeepers to terrorist Israel. The permanent members of United Nations Security Council has always vetoed, not voted, vetoed against all the resolutions in favor of Palestine. Woman, female in the uh, unifil. There is no democracy in United Nations Security Council. So, if we don't do something like the Western government, we too have blood on our hands. We helped Zionists to buy bombs and weapons and kill our fellow Muslims. This is the state we are in. We go back to sleep like nothing has happened. We just carry on our lives as usual until the next Intifada or Nakba comes again, the next Ramadan maybe, 
we will protest as loud as we can in the streets. I have seen these cycles many times since I was young. I suggest we Muslims form a group called World Islamic Narratives, W-I-N, to tell our children and grandchildren that we failed as Muslims to help other fellow Muslims wherever we are in the world. We can imagine this world Islamic narratives to form a consultative pressure group. This WIN should consist of three young and seriously dedicated ulama to help the ummah, three young non-political activists, three young professionals, three young technologists, three young academicians, three young Muslim reverts to represent our nations and meet hypothetically to save the Muslim ummah. We need the young ones to lead our Muslim people since the older Muslims have been too comfortable with lives unless they want to join the door is always open for them but it's best to leave it to the young ones to decide our future since we the not so young have ruined their future notice there's no politicians in this group since they only talk and can't act besides they already have venue in the United Nations and oh I see Young reverts must be included because they are more action-oriented compared with the born Muslims. Because we Muslims always disagree with each other, and since we don't trust each other, let the imaginary WIN meet online, at least to move our so-called lame Muslim agenda. Let's pretend for a second that we can do something. Let's imagine that WIN can form a pressure group to advise our Muslim governments to pressure the United Nations to abolish the five seats of permanent members. After all, the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council have been active in land grabbing and have been actively involved in suppressing Muslims in their own countries, let alone selling weapons to Muslim countries. Let's imagine that we can work together with our non-Muslim friends who are braver than us in voicing out the lame Muslim voices. Let WIN form an affiliate group with our non-Muslim friends to further our objectives to help catch all the war criminals. If you look at the International Criminal Court website, the slogan is trying individuals for genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity and aggression. Yeah, right. I'm yet to see George Bush, Tony Blair, Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, Donald Rumsfeld, and all the British foreign secretaries all these gangsters must be tried in the International Criminal Court. A lot of Muslims being tried at the International Criminal Court. Is this fair when all the gangsters and thugs and war criminals actually roaming free, controlling everything in the world until today? All the terrorist Israelis, war criminals, must be tried in the ICC. If Theodor Herzl can make terrorist state of Israel a reality in 50 years, let's see whether the young Muslims below 45 can do something to construct a plan and follow through via the world Islamic narratives. If the plan works, we can change the name to World Islamic Network. If it doesn't, it will remain as narratives to be told to our grandchildren. Should we form a serious version of WIN or a lame or dream version of WIN? It's all up to the young Muslims as the old ones just carry on sleeping in their comfortable beds until the next protest. Yes, we'll all be ready to yell again in the streets. Email your suggestions or write in the comment section. Let us tell you the United Nations, let us make a move against terrorist Israel. Enough is enough. We cannot and should not let these animals kill our Muslim brothers and sisters. We will be questioned in the Akhirah. Let's change the situation. Let's create a strategy to win the game. 
let's catch all the Israeli war criminals and beastly soldiers who kill Palestinians indiscriminately. These are racists in the utmost forms. We can no longer reason with them. We can't let the United Nations Security Council to veto again. Otherwise, we have to push for one seat for Islamic Nation as a permanent member of United Nations Security Council. Remember, all the permanent members are currently guilty of annexing and taking countries and building nuclear weapons. We people have to make this our lifelong mission to stop this hypocrisies of the superpowers. Enough is enough. Let's give back Palestine to Palestinians. Allahu Akbar. The moment when we were informed that a deflation airline has been appointed to bring our soldiers to Lebanon, we are very happy. And when I talk to the soldiers, they say they are quite happy to, to, to see our nation flag flying. Uh, we feel proud. I feel proud. And I just spoke to the Secretary of Defense, he also quite proud to be, to be on board of this aircraft. Thank you to the Malaysian Airlines. I'm on board of Malaysian Airlines. Uh, we are flying from Kuala Lumpur right up to uh, Rafiq Haruri Airport. Inshallah, we will be landing. And then I'm grateful to be uh, behind me, my soldiers. You know, uh, they are all ready to be to be uh, do their job there in uh, Lebanon for the next one year.